Podcast. Mike's Daily Podcast. 1321. Hi, I'm Mike Matthews. 1321 is the name of this F- 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 episode, is the number. And I'm broadcasting from Cafe Anyway, located somewhere in Podcastro Valley, Mont. Possibly we'll do one over the weekend in Podcastro Valley 10. But we're here at the last place on earth cafe anyway and today we talked to Madame Rutabaga, Valentino and Bison Bentley. Mike's Daily Podcast. Bring you the interesting news segment. A lot of interesting news. It's so news it's insane. It's the Michaelopedia and Santa Claus. Mike's Daily Podcast. What's the deal with parking today? It's hard to find a spot. I once spent a whole night in a parking lot with a girl. Wait a minute. Did I say that? out loud that was long ago and my name was McLeod I was a sheriff Sheriff McLeod and Mike's Daily Podcast that was my previous life as a sheriff with a mustache and I think I've said too much Mike's no I think Daily what was interesting was Podcast that parking lot got leveled yeah and they put a road through that parking lot and sometimes I'll drive on that road. It's in Santa Barbara somewhere. And I'll go, oh, this is where I spent all night with someone. Well, I'm not saying you should do that because then you wake up in your car and it stinks in your car. Why does your car stink? Because you don't have the cool little the, the Christmas tree thingy that hangs from the mirror. Makes it smell better. Hmm? Look who just walked in. Hi, Mark. It's Benita the Rodeo Queen and my good friend, Madam Rutabaga. Hello, Michael Marcio. We were hanging out today. We decided to pop in. Ooh. That's awesome. What are you two doing today? We're getting ready for Easter. Oh. And did you bring Nilly with you, too? Yeah. <laughs> Michael Marcio nearly is a bunch of a horse. Ooh. Did you ever have children, Madam Rutabaga? I can't go into that right now. Okay. Ah! I asked a personal question. Awkward. Look who else is here. Hello, dear Mike. It's Valentino, the branching attendant. And this is Bison Bentley. Do you know that? Mike, we saw you got some love on Facebook Day. Yeah! Facebook! Do you know that? Yes, I posted a picture of myself on the last show for the podcast picture. And oh, speaking of which, and here's today's podcast picture. Today, not a picture of me, but yeah, guess what? I took picture of water again. Yeah, of the bay. This is in Benicia, and Basil the boxer loves this one little spot in Benicia where he can run around on this beach. <coughs> Beachisha should be the name of that beach, but it's not. And yeah, it was fun. He ran around and barked. This is actually, I think, two, maybe three years ago, this picture. But I thought I'd pull it out and use it. Because I feel this should be a weekend of you playing on the beach or playing somewhere in your happy spot. That's Basil's happy spot. You should go to your happy spot this weekend for Easter weekend is my point. And maybe that's a parking lot. My whole point about parking lots is we live in a society where a lot of us spend a whole bunch of time trying to find a parking spot. There was a great song Roger Waters wrote. Roger of uh, Pink Floyd wrote uh, just about everything Pink Floyd ever did that had a huge hit. And he sings on the song um, Comfortably Numb with David Gilmour. For a while, the two of them were on the outs They weren't talking to each other. They had lawsuits against each other, but they seemed to have patched things up, thankfully, in their old age. But they still rock, and they're still young in heart. They rock. And Roger Waters wrote a great song in the 80s where he talked about, the lyric was, you spend all day looking for a parking spot, nothing for the... Heart, nothing for the pot, I think is what he said. Nothing for the. S- In other words, you, you spend all day looking for a parking spot and you don't get anything to bring home to eat. It was some lyric like that. I'm quoting it wrong. But it's off the top of my head, this show. 
Hey, I have to tell you, I'm getting a lot of interference from Morrissey. Because I've been listening nonstop to this Morrissey radio station I found through Shoutcast. The Shoutcast app. And this is... this. Sh- oh, it's like nonstop... It's either Morrissey, the Smiths, people covering Morrissey or the Smiths, or live performances by Morrissey. And I heard him do that one. That November spawned a monster in the shape of this child who let her flame and Jesus flame. And I used to kind of like that song, but to hear the live version of it, just killed me I'm like this is amazing This song is freaking awesome Because they really rocked it up And the audience was just totally getting into it It was just great So I've had a little Morrissey interference today Love my British singer songwriters For sure But the point being Parking spots I used to have to park on the street Now when I got a house years ago I was I am going to park in my garage. My garage is not going to be full of junk because a garage is meant to have your freaking car parked in it. So I I park my car in my garage and I love it. Love it. Oh, it is because, well, for one thing, your car lasts longer or the outside does. I love it. I love it. I so, so everywhere you go in the Bay Area, people's car, you know the people that have to park outside all the time and have no shelter because their cars have this, the hood becomes all faded and there's this weird thing going on on the hood. Like, it's almost like acid fell out of the sky. Well, I know we have acid rain and whatnot, but it's affected a lot of cars. You know, cars that are from the 90s or earlier than that got this weird thing happening to their paint job right on their hood all over the bay but there was a thing about oh it was on the economist podcast i love listening to the economist radio you know they do the magazine the economist and they were talking about how we have a parking lot culture but with the self-driving cars someday that might be a thing and, and the uber and the lyft and all that You might just have a car come pick you up and drop you off somewhere and then go away. And you won't need the parking lot anymore. And certainly in San Francisco, I've only once or twice actually parked in San Francisco the whole time I've taken BART there. Which that's a whole other situation in Podcaster Valley. The parking lot fills up now regularly to park at the Castro Valley BART during the week. And you can't park at any of the streets around the BART station because they got all these signs that say only two hours and you have to drive further away from the BART station to park and even these further away places like the Castro Village you can't park there they've got signs that say only three hours or my roommate actually he got a warning yesterday for parking all day in the Castro Village he parked it all day at the Castro Village walked 11 minutes to get to the BART station and he still got a warning. It's it's ridiculous in the Bay Area. Now, I don't remember this happening in Alabama. I think it was a little bit more calm. But I do remember when I left Ventura, they immediately were starting this, their public... You had to pay for parking in downtown. And I remember that was a big uproar. But the city council, they said, Hey, don't worry about it. Uh, it's actually a good thing because now there's free Wi-Fi through the whole city. Because our parking meters have Wi-Fi on them. Okay, thanks. Just give me free parking instead. I'll get Wi-Fi through Verizon. The Verizon app. The Comcast app. Everywhere I go, I get the Wi-Fi. Although that's a pain. Because your phone is looking for the Wi-Fi. And then all of a sudden, your phone becomes stupid all of a sudden. Because it's trying to get the Wi-Fi signal. And maybe that Wi-Fi source isn't connected to the internet. So your phone is sitting there with no internet for a second. And then you're like, okay, just forget about the Wi-Fi. Go back to the 3G. But I've, I'm, I've gone into tech speak, and I apologize. I wanted to say hi out to Johnny Martinez, who 
I used to work with, he apparently listens to the show, and he heard me talk about Safeway last show, and he commented on Facebook. That's where I got the Facebook love. He said, hey, you got Safeway up there? And I said, yeah, we have Safeway. No Vons. There's no Vons up here, but it's all Safeway and Lucky's. And, of course, Costco and Walmart and Target and all that stuff. But... Yes, thank you, Johnny, John, Jay, Jingleheimer Smith. Good talking to you. It's the same thing happens to me. People don't know if to call me Mike or Matt, because I went by Matt for so long in Ventura. But whatever, that's the... The... the, the, the uh, cross we must bear! Thank you, I went all Easter there. And tomorrow's Good Friday. And I will not be doing a show. Good Friday. An ice cream truck just went by. I'm not going to be doing a show for Good Friday. Just want you to know, because I'm so religious. And yes, thank you for uh, going to mikesdailypodcast.com and helping out the show. Click on the Amazon link, buy whatever it is you're going to buy. Maybe you're going to buy a crucifix. Go through amazon.com, and that helps us out. If you go through the one at mikesdailypodcast.com, the little icon there it says shop connect and enjoy there's also the paypal you can help us out that way and you get a personalized mp3 for thee from all the cafe anyway characters also at mikesdailypodcast.com past interviews i'm starting on the d's now i've gotten a through d and this is taking me for freaking ever but you can hear all the past interviews that i've done and that just know that's changing as we speak I'm working on that. Probably going to work on that a lot this weekend. But let's get to the segment, The Michaelopedia Insanica. So much is going on. The Michaelopedia Insanica. Awesome. Now, first off, this weird thing that happened, thanks to Trump. Global stock markets turned lower and the dollar was volatile yesterday. Or actually today now. This is when this is going on. This was just posted a few hours ago. After President Donald Trump withdrew a threat to declare China a currency manipulator and said the U.S. currency was getting too strong. Tensions over North Korea also weighed on investors ahead of a long weekend in many markets. I inherited a mess. It's a mess. Trump said he won't declare China a currency manipulator, dropping a key campaign promise. In a newspaper interview in a White House news conference, Trump hailed the rapport he developed with his Chinese counterpart, Xi Jinping, in meetings last week that seemed to have eased Xi Jinping, sorry, uh, uh, eased trade tensions this meeting last week, the meeting, several meetings he had. It was like a conference. It was a conference. It was a summit. A declaration that China manipulates the exchange rate of its yuan, yuan, yuan. What? Well, when you yawn, I yawn. To gain a trade advantage could have opened the way to sanctions. They're not currency manipulators, Donald Trump told the Wall Street Journal, saying Beijing has been cheating on its currency for months. On the dollar's exchange rate against those of major trading partners, Trump said, I think our dollar is getting too strong, and partially that's my fault because people have confidence in me. He added that it's very, very hard to compete. Very, very hard. Very hard. When you have a strong dollar and other countries are devaluing their currency. Oh. Oh, where is it? Oh, I have this one thing that he... Which is a very good thing. Which is a very, very good thing. (laughs) Those remarks helped push the yen to its highest level since mid-November. That November spawned just after the presidential election. Speaking of that part of the Pacific Ocean, the other side of where I am, North Korea may have the capacity to launch a warhead loaded with sarin nerve gas. Not to California, but maybe Japan, said Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe today as tensions rise over the country's missile and nuclear programs. Sarin has been used in domestic attacks in Japan, notably in 1995, when the Aum Supreme Truth Cult released it in the Tokyo Tokyo subway, killing 13 people and sickening 6,000 others. 
There's a possibility, of course, this has also happened in uh, Syria. There's a possibility that North Korea is already capable of delivering via missile a warhead containing sarin. Abe told a par- parliamentary diplomacy and defense committee referring to the poison nerve agent. Then, this is interesting and very, well... It's pretty interesting. I guess in some ways, a bit of revenge. And you know what they say. Revenge is a dish best served cold. You think about that. An angry cow, crowd, or cow, uh... That's an angry cow right there. An angry crowd chanted, You lie! To South Carolina Representative Joe Wilson at a town hall Monday, using the Republican congressman's own infamous line against him. Yes, he was the idiot that in 2009, President Barack Obama's speech to Congress, I think this was his first speech. Yes, I think this was, what do they call that? The, we just, Trump just did one. The first, whatever they call it, the first speech. Because it's not a State of the Union speech yet, because he hasn't been in office long enough. So, Wilson shouted those words, Joe Wilson, the idiot, shouted those words at Barack Obama during his speech to Congress in 2009, after President Obama said the health reforms he was proposing would not apply to those in the country illegally. He later apologized, and Obama accepted the apology, saying at the time that we all make mistakes. Now, this is going to haunt Wilson forever. Thank you. Thank you, Turnabout Fair Play. And uh, so, Wilson was confronted at a town hall in Aiken County, South Carolina, on Monday, again on the issue of Obamacare, but this time by people upset over Republicans' plans to repeal the health care law. A GOP effort fizzled last month due to lack of support in the House, but the majority party and President Donald Trump say the replacement is still on the agenda. At the town hall at Aiken Technical College, members of the crowd held red signs with you lie on them, and and they shouted the phrase, at one point, Wilson said after the meeting that he is still committed to repealing and replacing the Affordable Care Act. And it went on and on about people who've lost their doctors, their insurance, they've lost their jobs, we can do better. The video of a passenger being dragged by an officer from a United Express flight, which sounded something like this. Ah, no! It, oh, I, when I heard it, I thought it was a pig squealing. That's what it sounded like. Listen to the audio. I don't know what it looked like. I still haven't watched the video. I don't really want to, but it sounded horrific. Shine an unwanted spotlight on the little-known police force that guards Chicago's two main airports and could threaten United's future. Oh, and Oscar Muno, Munoz? Muniz? Munoz? Oh, my God. So, right after it happened... He said to his employees, yeah, well, that guy that we evicted from the plane, he was being unruly. And now he's all, oh, oh, it was terrible what we did. We're so bad. (sighs) Guy. Chicago's aviation off. Oh, so I know a guy who completely takes the opposite view of whatever the media said. For example, this guy I know, let's just call him Mleg. Mleg said, hey. You know, the guy they evicted from the plane, he wasn't that good of a guy. He had a gambling problem. Who cares? Who cares if he was uh, someone that liked to eat the, the heads off of chocolate bunnies? You know, that was just wrong. And then this guy, Bleg, said, well, you know, Syrian pro- Syria probably didn't gas those people uh, uh Assad probably didn't gas that village. It was probably just, um, the, it was ISIS that did it. Okay. Also, Maled, Maleg, whatever I'm calling him, said, Hey, you know, uh, the thing that Sean Spicer said about Hitler, you know, he's right, though. And I, at that point, I was, my ears just closed in upon themselves and exploded in my brain. That was so, what the hell? And that worm from Hawaii that's eating your brain. I was so wanting that to eat my brain rather than hear what this guy was saying. 
I cannot believe you can't always take the opposite view. Yes, it's one thing to question authority and question everything, but come on. Your your conspiracy theory world is about to collapse on you, believe me. Why do you even put gas in your car if you don't trust anything? If you don't trust that gas is going to even move your car? I think I'm making a point somewhere. But Chicago's aviation officers, they and they often sound like this. You will respect my authority! They are not part of the regular police force, unlike in many other big cities. They get less training than regular officers and can't carry firearms in the airport. Three of them were put on leave amid outrage over how they treated the passenger. Uh, and cell phone footage of the confrontation really has put it at risk. Alderman Chris Talafiero said Wednesday, a day before aldermen were scheduled to grill United and the Chicago Aviation Department about why a Kentucky physician was yanked out of his seat after he refused to get off the full jetliner at O'Hare Airport. The city council is looking for answers about the embarrassing video that has been seen around the world. All right, I got... A couple of happier stories here. One, that the drought is over in California, and our governor, Jerry Brown, signed an executive order lifting the state's drought emergency in all but four counties. You may have heard this. This is so freaking awesome, and I know that we're still going to have those idiots that are part of our California water infrastructure going, no, you can't. We're still in a drought. Shut up. Americans are steadily abandoning traditional telephone landlines and exclusively using wireless devices. While 8.4% of U.S. households used only cell phones in 2005, only 8.4%, that's not very much. This was true of nearly half of all American households only a decade later. Nearly half. The likelihood of living in a cell phone-only household varies considerably across the states. New Jersey has the lowest share. In Idaho, the share is more than doubled. The highest share of any state. In Idaho, you don't have a landline. You are li- using your cell phone, your mobile phone. Perhaps you are using your smartphone to listen to this show. And finally, we have pizza parties here at my work, or there at my work. And it, they celebrate when we do something really good. And then we get to eat the pizzas, and then the rest of the day, we want to take a nap. The whole company wants to take a nap, and we take a nap, and nobody spoons each other because that would be awkward. But a year ago, Stephen Colbert's Late Show was lagging behind Jimmy Fallon's Tonight Show by more than one million viewers. Since President Donald Trump's election in November, however, Colbert's brand of politically charged humor is... Exceeding over Fallon's lighthearted jokes. Late show ratings have been up ever since they began inching above Fallon's numbers in January. As a result, Colbert's staff has been enjoying some top notch grub. This, according to the Huffington Post, the staff is rewarded with pizza on Tuesdays if it beats Fallon. Hey, we had a pizza party this past Tuesday. The usual champion, Fallon is usually the usual, is usually the usual champion. In Nielsen ratings. That means they've been chowing down on some cheesy goodness for the past 10 weeks. So they beat Fallon. Good job. Throughout the offices. I mean, Fallon is amazing, but throughout the offices of the Late Show, staff members could be heard saying, pizza, pizza. Fallon's Tonight Show received a strong backlash back in September when the host invited Trump on the show and got to make his tussle flip his hair, his fake hair around. Rather than confronting the then Republican nominee about his campaign built on xenophobic promises, the awkward interview featured softball questions and Fallon tousling, tousling Trump's hair. Tousling is the word we were searching for. All right. As we go outside a cafe anyway, we bring you Mike's Daily Podcast somewhere in Podcastro Valley. Thank you for listening to the show today. If I don't talk to you this weekend, have a happy, happy, swell, swell, Easter, Easter. The, the holiday that celebrates Alice in Wonderland, the greatest book ever written. About bunnies hopping around and they've got little watches and they're going, I'm late, I'm late, oh no. And, you know, blonde girls falling into holes and that kind of thing. Then Tim Burton doing awful movies of said story. That's what Christmas is all about, isn't it? And enjoy it with your family. 
however way you celebrate Easter. Ham, deviled eggs. Now that's kind of weird for Easter, but you know, with the overall sentiment of the holiday and whatnot. I'll talk to you soon. God willing. Oh, and check out my uh, country show, Country Crossroads Radio, at countrycrossroadsradio.com, a link at mikesdailypodcast.com. Next show, it's Shelly Shuhart, Floyd the Floorman, John Deere the Engineer. Oh, look, an egg. Thanks, guys. Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.